Welcome back to the garage, or if you're new to the channel and this is the first video of mine that you've seen, welcome to the garage. My name is Zane. Today's video is going to be about the Willys Jeep that I've got sitting behind me. I'm going to talk about how I ran across it, what I've done to it to get it to the point where it's at right now, and then I'm going to actually remove the front clip and hood off of this so I can get an easier access to the engine. Now not only that, I'm going to also show you the engine that I plan on swapping into this Jeep. It's something that's a little bit different. I haven't ever really seen one put into a Willys Jeep like this, but I'll go over it. We'll talk about it a little bit, and hopefully you can sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. I actually ran across this Jeep about eight months ago. It was sitting on a very nice older gentleman's farm in the same hometown as mine, so it was about a five, maybe ten minute drive to go and get this. Now I originally went to buy an International Scout that he had that he basically told me that he would sell for scrap and I did buy it, that's the Scrap Scout, I'll throw a picture in here. I bought it for parts and parts for another project that I've kind of got brewing up in my mind so something in the distant future. But anyhow, I've seen this sitting on his property next to an old combine. I've always wanted one of these old Jeeps but it seems like any time that I see one it's either too much money or somebody doesn't want to sell it. So while I'm there, I asked him what the story was that on this Jeep, and he said that a friend of his was wanting to buy it, but he did not bring him any money for it. He just told him that he would like to have it, and that's been about six months or so. He hasn't heard back. He thinks his buddy still wants it, but if anything changes, he will let me know. So I kind of just pushed it out of my mind. I didn't really think that uh, somebody would pass up this Jeep, especially for the price, which we'll go over here in a minute. But I buy the International Scout, about three weeks later, the same gentleman calls up and says, you know what, that friend of mine won't return any of my calls. He never did give me any money. Would you still be interested in that old Jeep that I've got? I said, definitely. Uh, what would you ask for it? Well, it's in rough shape. I've got a title for it. Do you think it would be worth $500? I said, definitely. It would be worth $500. So I go and get this. Now, he told me the story on this Jeep briefly. His father actually bought this a while back, a long time ago. And they use it on his farm for hauling feed around. They drive it through the creek. They learn how to drive a stick shift on this old Jeep. I mean, it's seen, it's seen some rough days, I'm sure. And the fellow that I bought it from said that it definitely wasn't baby. Long story short, I've always wanted one of these older Jeeps. I think I paid a incredibly fair price for it, for what it is. And I think I can make it into something really neat. I have big plans for this project. We'll go over that in just a minute. But let me take you down off the camera stand and I'll show you what I've done to this to get it to this point. In order to get this little engine running, I've already checked a few small things off of the list. The first of which being new spark plugs and spark plug wires, followed by a new distributor cap and rotor underneath of it. Took the carburetor apart and completely resealed it with new gaskets. And you can see that I've actually had a bag on this. There's a rag down inside of it, so it's out of the weather. The hood's been on it, so there should not be any problems with it. I took the starter off, and that was kind of another story in itself. The starter was stuck. There was a lot of debris and rust inside of it, so I cleaned it up. I tested it, and the armature actually will come out to engage the flywheel, so I should not have any problems with it. One of the biggest hurdles that I didn't have to mess around with, and I'm extremely lucky for that, is this little engine has set for 15 maybe even 20 years, and it was not stuck. So I drained the oil out of it. It didn't look bad. It didn't look like a milkshake or anything like that. So I put new oil in it, a new filter, and I don't think there's a lot holding this engine back from running. Now, I actually was piecing together a few other odds and ends, such as a key switch, and that's right whenever the coronavirus happened, so shipping came to a standstill. I waited three weeks for the ignition for this Jeep, and not only that, I tried using the wiring that's been in this Jeep already. I know it was a long shot. There's been a lot of rodent damage to this, and nothing will happen. So the Jeep's going to need rewired. But I think just to test this engine out, I'm going to rewire it with a key switch over here next to the battery, just so I can see that this engine runs. But there's not a lot holding this back, this engine, from running. So I think the next thing to do is to pull this front clip off of here, and I can get a little bit better access to this little engine. Figured that would happen. Guess that's better than not wanting to move at all.
I've been very lucky so far. Either the factory hardware has been replaced and the bolts either come out or break off, or the factory encapsulated nut that goes behind the sheet metal has actually worked like it's supposed to. Sometimes I know you'll get in here after they sit for a while and build up rust, and you'll have one of these just spin on you, and you'll have to take a grinder and cut it off. But I've lucked out so far, and these have all came off without any kind of major hassle. I'm also going to remove this tow bar because it's practically useless. The little end that's supposed to clip over a two inch ball is rusted to itself, so it wouldn't work for what I need. I tried pushing it in the garage the first time with this, and all it did was bend it, so it's rusted. It's seen its better days, and it's just time to finally take it off of here. With the front clip out of the way, there's quite a bit more room around this little engine so I can work on it. I won't have to lean over the fenders and it will help out to get it up and running. And not only up and running, but it will definitely help to pull the engine out of here. I know that may sound kind of idiotic to some of you watching this video for me to get this engine running and then immediately pull it back out of the Jeep. Whenever I seen this project setting, I thought two things to myself. Number one, I really have to save this from the crusher. I would hate to see something cool like this go and get scrapped. And number two, if I could buy it, I had a good idea of a power plant swap that I want to try, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, this one, this Jeep works out perfectly because this isn't a low mileage Jeep that's complete, that's never been messed with. I would hate to take something like that, pull the engine out, and mess around with the originality of it. But with this thing having a lot of repairs done to it, a lot of hack jobs on the wiring already, I see no problem as making it something that's my own. I can easily get this little engine running. I can pull it back out of here, keep it on a cart in the garage out of the weather. And if I run across a Jeep that's in a lot nicer condition than this one, and the engine is bad in that, I can always use this, swap it right down in there, and basically be plug and play with it. Now one other thing that I wanted to mention as well, I talked about in some of the other videos, the starter on the side of this Jeep. This engine will run if the starter will work. The remanufactured ones that I've seen online go for around $350. I can't see spending almost as much for a starter as I did for this entire Jeep. So if the starter's bad, I'm just going to take this engine out anyways, keep it out of the weather, because I do believe that it will work. I can run across the parts Jeep maybe later on that has a good starter, and probably buy the Jeep for about as much as I would pay for one of these remanufactured starters. But anyhow, another thing about this Jeep is that the transmission, if you watch my other videos, whenever I bought it, it was stuck in gear. I had a really hard time getting it out of gear. And whenever I took the top plate off of it and drained the fluid out, well, I should say fluid, it was nothing but water and mud. I think the transmission shot in this. I ran across one on Facebook Marketplace a while back. It's the same one as the one that's in this Jeep, so I can use it for the engine swap. So I just wanted to go over and kind of say and try to inspire maybe somebody else who's got an idea in the back of their mind. You don't have to have $100,000 wrapped up in a project like this as long as you can take something and throw it kind of together the way that you want and have fun with it. I don't see any problem with doing that. Now we'll go ahead and I'll show you what I got planned for the engine in this Jeep. Now for the moment that everybody's probably waiting for. What kind of engine do I plan on swapping into this little Jeep? There's so many options that I could have went with, a few of which I've seen a lot of other people do on the internet already. And from the research that I've done on this particular engine, I don't think anybody has ever done, or at least showed on YouTube. But I'll go ahead and show you what I got. And that is, a 2.5 liter Chrysler four-cylinder engine. 
hold on, hold on, I can understand. You're probably wondering why I'm going from a four-cylinder to a four-cylinder, but this isn't just any 2.5 Chrysler engine. This is the turbo version. Now the factory engine in this Jeep puts out around 60 horsepower, and this engine right here, stock, puts out around 140 horsepower, not to mention all of the upgrades that they make for this. This has the Garrett turbocharger instead of the Mitsubishi turbocharger, so this engine is a little bit better than the other alternative. And we'll just kind of see how that little three-speed transmission in the Jeep holds up to uh, the upgraded horsepower from this turbo engine. I hope you all approve of my choice for the engine swap for this little Jeep. Now I'm not going to crank the horsepower up and do anything crazy like drag race it or take it to the track. I just think a little bit extra horsepower will help with its off-road capabilities. There's a few things that I can do to that engine to help it last a little bit longer, like put head studs in it, probably put all new gaskets. I may actually just use this engine for mock-up because I'm not really sure how it is internally and may have something wrong with it. It came out of a mid to late 1980s Dodge Shelby Charger, so I'm sure that it wasn't driven by Grandma to church every Sunday, let's just put it that way. But the engine's all complete, I can use it for mock-up. I'll have to make my own custom adapter plate to go from the engine to the transmission since there's not any kind of support from the aftermarket on that. But my idol here on YouTube is Jonathan W. He's made a lot of his own adapter plates. I've watched a lot of his videos. I think it's something that can be managed. And it's also something else that I'll have to either run a throttle body on that engine or I could even go a few years older and get a carbureted intake for it. But I'll cross that bridge whenever I get there. I just wanted to say thanks to everybody else out there for watching these videos, giving me kind words of encouragement and support. It's been about a month since I've had a video out, and I apologize for that, but the way it is at work, I have to plow snow, so when the weather gets bad, I'm stuck at work and I can't do anything in the garage. But I got the garage cleaned up, and with the help of my dad the other day, he came over. We spent about 45 minutes getting this Jeep back into the garage. It was snowing heavily outside, so if you don't usually leave a comment, at least drop down in the comment section and say thanks, Dad. <laughs> but thanks a lot for watching this video. Don't forget to check the video description below. There's a lot of other channels that I give shoutouts to, and they do the same for me. They put out fantastic content, and I'm trying to help them out with subscribers as best as I can. They do great videos. If you head over there and like what you see, go ahead and subscribe to them. Just drop down in the comment section and tell them Zane sent you. But thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment or a question down below. Consider subscribing if this is the kind of content that you're into. And as always, just a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project. Whatever that project may be. Now that this video is over, how about you go outside and work on something? My name is Zane and I'll catch you next time. Oh, don't mind me. I just uh, remembered earlier in the video that I said I was going to remove the hood and I didn't, so I'll catch you next time.